Hey, uh, I want to show you how you can use Claude code inside of Home Assistant. If you're like me and you love using AI everywhere, uh, or you know how to use Claude code and you want to see how you can use it in a Home Assistant, this video is for you. I'm going to go through uh, the installation process, and then I'm going to show you a couple examples of how I have found Claude code to be useful inside of Home Assistant. So that's what we'll be doing. Um, uh, two things uh, as way of preface. Uh, first is uh, this method uh, of using Claude code happens through an add-on. And so you can only use add-ons if your Home Assistant um, installation is Home Assistant OS or Home Assistant Supervised um, Edition. So uh, if you don't uh, have that approach um, and maybe you're just running on a Mac or uh, on a Windows machine, you may still be able to use Claude code, but this video is not how to do it. So that's the first preface. The second is uh, if you have not already um, backed up your home assistant, I would recommend doing that before playing around with, with Claude code, especially if you haven't used Claude code before, um, because um, if you get yourself into a weird situation, Claude code, it, it's an AI and uh, it may do some things that you may not want it to do um, if you're not used to using it. So I would just, uh, you know, uh, out of abundance of caution, do a backup of your home assistant. You can do that settings, <clears throat> go down to uh, system and then backups. So without further ado, let's jump in. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to settings, uh, scroll down, add-ons, and here we're going to have to add uh, an add-on store. So click that in the bottom right, click the three dots up above, and then click on repositories. Cool. I've already got this one added. Um, if it wasn't added, you'll go uh, and get this Hey TCAS Home Assistant Add-ons repository, copy it, put it down in the bottom, and hit add. Uh, and so that is what that looks like. And I'll show you exactly what that process is. Um, paste, add, it now adds this. And we can scroll down here in our add-on store and see Claude Terminal. So once we've done that, we can click on Claude Terminal. It will open this up. And then I can click Install. And we'll give that just a minute. Cool. So we are installed. Um, and now uh, we want to make sure that Start on Boot is here. And then we want um, Watchdog. This will restart the add-on if it crashes, and then add to sidebar as well. So that's there. Um, auto update, I'll leave off for now. And then I'm also going to hit start. Cool. So this has started. Now we can go in and actually set up uh, the rest of the way for Claude code. Um, I can go over here on the sidebar and click Claude terminal. That opens us up and then it's going to guide us through a setup process. Uh, if you've set up Claude code before, it's going to be the same process that you're used, that you're used to. If you, if you have not done this, um, I'll show you kind of what I might do. So here I'll choose uh, the, the style. You can use your arrow keys here. You're not going to be able to use your, your mouse to click. Um, use your arrow keys and then uh, I'll just keep it on dark mode, then hit enter. Um, to do this, you will need a Claude Code subscription. There's a number of these that work. Um, I'm going to do this first option where I have a subscription of Pro, Max, Team, or Enterprise. You can see here that there are uh, a number of different options. Um, I use the Pro version that gives me access to Claude Code. So I will flip back over here and then hit enter. It's going to say it's going to open the browser to sign in. Uh, for this add-on, that's not going to work. I'm going to have to click on this link to open up um, to do authentication. I'll hit Authorize. I'm going to copy this code, come back here, paste the code, and hit Enter. Great. Login has been successful. I hit Enter. Cool. So uh, now that we have this uh, all set up, Claude gives us a couple of warning signs. Obviously, Claude can make mistakes. That's what I mentioned earlier, so just be careful. I'll hit enter, um, and then I'm going to, uh, yes, trust the files in this folder. This is my Home Assistant instance. Yes, proceed. The first thing that we're, wanna get, that we're going to want to do is run slash init, and that will create a claude.md file. Uh, that will be, um, basically, it's Claude's gonna go out and uh, I'm gonna run it, and now I'll talk while that's happening. What, what is going to happen here is Claude is going to go out and it's going to understand all the files um, that are in this repository because Claude doesn't know that it's working in Home Assistant yet. And so it's going to go out and it's going to read all the files and try and understand what's going on here. And then uh, what it's going to do is it's going to write that all into a, a markdown file that it will read every time on boot. So it will have a, um, a basis for, for um, the repository that it's in, in this case, uh, Home Assistant. So it will know that it is working inside of Home Assistant. So here, it's just verifying um, with me that it wants to run this command to keep reading some things. Yes, I'm going to hit uh, go ahead and continue. And then what I'm going to do is uh, to prevent it from asking me 
to use any other questions, I'm going to hit shift tab. You don't have to do this. And I've uh, turned this mode on to accept edits automatically. So it shouldn't have to, it should not ask me again. So I'm going to let this uh, churn for a minute and then uh, I'll come back. Awesome. So Claude just finished here and I'm going to scroll back up to understand uh, what we just saw here. So Claude was, you know, spelunking through this, uh, this repository. Um, this appears to be Home Assistant Configuration Directory. Cool. Let me examine the key configuration files to understand the structure. So it read my configurations, it read my automations, it read my scripts, et cetera, et cetera. Continued on, and then it wrote uh, this Claude file. Key sections, project overview. This describes this as a Home Assistant repo. Awesome. Conf configuration structure. Um, explains the split YAML file organization, key integrations, CB to MQTT, ESB Home, Alarmo, and other custom components, So, um, and so on and so forth. And so it, it has a, a quick understanding of this whole process of, of, um, of my Home Assistant setup. And it's written that to a Cloud MD file. It will read that every time uh, that it boots up. So this is where we're at. Cool. I'm glad that we've done this. And then now we can move on to um, a couple examples. So I have a couple examples that I want to walk through. The first is I want to add an automation. Um, actually, I want to modify an, an automation. I have uh, some, out, some, some water valves outside uh, that I have set to an automation. I'm going to ask Claude Code about these. So I just asked Claude Code, what automations do I have for water valves? Claude is going to uh, look into this and get back to me. Uh, obviously, like I could just ask it to make a change to an automation, but I first want to understand what Claude uh, is understanding about my automations. Cool. Scheduled watering automations. So there's daily garden watering. This happens at 9 a.m. and 4. And then daily front watering. Um, this happens at 9.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. So this is great, but we've moved to fall, and uh, I want to change this daily front watering um, from happening twice a day to happening just once a day for 15 minutes uh, every other day. So I'm going to see if Claude can do that. For my daily front watering, can you change this to... had a typo there. I'm going to leave it because Claude should understand. Um, can you change this to water every other day? and only for 15 minutes. Cool. Now, uh, a couple notes before I hit enter here. I have uh, accept edits on. Um, remember, I got there by going shift tab. So if I do that again, that's going to move into plan mode, which is actually what I'm going to use here. If I do it one more time, it'll be in the default mode um, where it asks for uh, verification before it uses uh, before it modifies any files. Um, I'm going to move into plan mode. And then I'm uh, so shift tab, and then shift tab again. And then I'm going to hit enter. And what's going to happen is uh, Claude Code is going to uh, write up a plan for how it wants to solve this. So we'll give this just a minute. OK, cool. So Claude uh, understands what I want. Before I create the plan, I need to clarify a few details. This is cool. And actually, this is the first time I've seen uh, Claude do this uh, sort of verification process. Odd days, even days, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. So I think what we're going to do is Let's do odd days. Sure, that sounds good. And then the time uh, keep, this is this is really cool. I've never seen Claude uh, confirm in this way. So this is pretty neat. So let's do, I think 9.30 AM is fine. I'm gonna hit enter and then submit answers. So now Claude is gonna take my answers and it is going to uh, write up the plan that it wants to do. Cool, we've got the plan. Changes to automation, daily front watering in automations YAML. Update the triggers, remove the 430 trigger, keep the 930 trigger, add condition to run only on odd days of the month. Cool. Update watering duration, change from 30 minutes to 15 minutes. That sounds good. Change to reflect new schedule. Awesome. Preserve all safety me mechanisms. Yep, cool. So I had like these other safety mechanisms in my automation. Um, to, if it didn't retry, it would. Re if it didn't shut off the water, it would let me know um, after three tries, et cetera, et cetera. Cool. Um, and then I can choose yes and auto accept edits or yes and manually approve edits. I'm going to do that one so we can see the change before, um, before uh, Claude actually makes it. So I'll hit two and then we're going to let Claude do that. Cool. So here is the change that Claude wants to do. It updates the description and then the conditions. It uses this uh, value template. Um, it's a mathematical expression um, uh, to only 
only uh, make the automation happen on odd days. So that looks good. I'm going to hit yes. It's going to uh, change that automation. Obviously, this is something we could have done in the automation uh, you know, uh, UI, but uh, it's this is just an example of a simple thing that Claude can do. Now, also wants to uh, change a message that it sends to me um, whenever this happens, so that looks great. Yes, I'm going to allow that. Cool, and it wants to make one more change to a message that I have. The neat thing here is, yes, this is a very simple change that we're making, um, but Claude can get very complex and and uh, it understands the templating and the YAML language uh, that these automations are written in. So you can write some fairly complex things. Cool, automation will next run on 9.30. So that's awesome. Um, this is great. I think what I'm gonna have to do is I'm actually going to have to uh, reload my Home Assistant to make sure that this uh, change is picked up. I think you have to do that whenever you make changes to um, an automation file. So I'm gonna go to, uh, I believe settings, three dots up here, restart Home Assistant. And then I'm just going to do a quick reload. So we'll give that just a minute, and then we're going to see if uh, these changes have been reflected in our automations. So in settings, we'll go to automations and scenes, uh, automations, and then we have our daily front watering, which I have turned off. I'm going to click on that. When the time is equal to 9.30, if the, temp the template renders um, equal, and so this is our uh, every other day situation, then perform this, um, delay for 15 minutes, uh, awesome. That all looks good. Cool. So now I'm going to turn this automation on and I will, you know, hope that works. Cool. I'm going to flip back to Claude Terminal here. Uh, one interesting thing with Claude Terminal when we do this is you will lose um, your, your last conversation, however you'd like to pick up where you left off. Because um, basically what happens is Claude, it just starts back up. I think, I don't know if that's... Uh, a situation with how the add-ons work or if the, the add-on has not been you know updated so it, it does this in a better way um, but you can do slash and then continue or i think you can do resume yeah resume and it will resume the last conversation okay that's not working let me go back cloud terminal resume Okay, well, apparently that's not working. So it's an AI. Uh, this this must be a bug in the new Claude code. So uh, maybe that's not working. But anyway, we'll keep going. Cool. So let's go in the next example. Um, I want to update my dashboard. I'm going to flip over here to my main dashboard. This is my dashboard. I have I have some issues here. Some entity isn't found, but that's okay. I have this battery levels in the bottom right. Um, primary bath, north air conditioning. These are all, most of these are moisture sensors. And then I have my, um, my uh, water valves. These are all Zigbee um, devices. Um, I have some new ones that are my, uh, my temperature uh, sensors that I have in various refrigerators and freezers. And I'd like for them to show up here. So I'm gonna see if Claude can do that. So let's go back to Claude Terminal. And then I'm gonna write this out. Cool. I'd like for you to update my main dashboard so that my temp sensors, fridge and freezer, show up under battery levels. Let's see what happens here. I'm also going to put this in the plan mode. So shift, tab, shift, tab. Cool. We'll see what happens. Nice. So I've read my dashboard. I'm going to check if there are battery sensors for the fridge and freezer. Now it's going to look at, uh, it's going to run this command. It looks like that's fine. I'm going to go to two. Yes. And don't ask again for HA state list commands and config. That sounds good. Let me check the Zigbee configuration. So it's gonna check my Zigbee configuration file to see if there's, okay, look at that. Um, and one thing I wanna note here is this HA state thing did not work. And so Claude was like, okay, let me try something else. And so it decided to look in my Zigbee to MQQ, MQTT configuration, I read this, then it found my sensors. These are Aquarius sensors, awesome, which are battery powered Zigbee devices, nice. Now here's the plan. I'll update the battery level section in UI main dashboard to include the three temperature um, sensor battery levels. That looks good to me. Yes, and auto accept edits. Awesome. So it looks like Claude is done here. Um, simple change here. Just added these new entities here um, that it found uh, from looking at my uh, Zigbee to MQTT configuration, which is pretty cool. Um, I didn't have to go looking through all those files. 
The battery sensors for your fridge and freezer, um, nice, they should be here. These Aquarius sensors will show their battery percentage and trigger low battery warning levels through your existing automation. Cool, so I already have an automation for low battery warning, um, and it's just noting that that should still trigger for these, that's cool. Um, but let's go to the main dashboard and see what happened. So I'm gonna go up here, battery levels, look at that. Freezer and basement. So it looks like I maybe should replace those batteries. They're in the freezer, and so uh, the the batteries don't work as well. So um, uh, these these may be a bit deceiving, but we have these here and added. So that was super easy. Um, one note here is I do have uh, this this dashboard as a separate YAML file, um, and so uh, I am able to have Claude change these, and then I can just flip to the to the dashboard and see the changes immediately. Um, so if you don't have your dashboard split out into separate YAML files, you may want to do that. Um, cool. So, uh, that is that example. Um, a cool thing here is I actually had Claude build this entire dashboard, including all of these, um, temperature gauges, which is pretty cool. Um, I think they're, they're, they're more complex to set up, um, especially if you're just writing the YAMLs for them. So, uh, yeah, those are the two examples that I wanted to run through. Um, so yeah, cool. A couple things as we wrap up, if you don't have Claude code, I would highly recommend uh, getting it and playing around with it. Um, I think AI is here to stay um, and uh, it's fun to play with. So uh, I would recommend, um, you know, if you can swing a subscription, go for that and play around with it. Um, and yeah, just see what it can do. Um, and then as exhibited by some of the examples I had today, uh, Claude code is not perfect. Um, and, uh, it may mess up. It may do things wrong. It may invoke wrong tools, uh, but it can fumble around and figure things out. So just like a human, um, like anything else, uh, cloud code and various AI things like cloud code, uh, they're tools. Um, and so, uh, the tool isn't perfect. Um, but, uh, as you play around with it and use it, um, you're more able to figure out the, the ways that you can use it effectively. So um, I would highly recommend playing around with, with things like Cloud Code uh, and Home Assistant and things like that. So I think that's all I have uh, for you today. Thanks for watching.